was terrible. It was strewn in garbage. At the corner where we have a little garden, there were weeds, and a lot of people who used drugs would come and they would put their paraphernalia there. It was very, a very unpleasant place, and the people who have apartments here felt very unsafe. When we cleaned it up one weekend, we had 10 industrial-sized bags of garbage we took out. The very next day, nobody came. The people who normally came here went elsewhere. And the people who lived in the apartments, they suddenly said, we feel safer because it's tidied up. I think everybody respects you if you clean something up. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we enjoy it because now, although it's not a prestige area, it still is tidy and clean and we take pride in it. And I think that's important. I think every little greenway is important. Yes. And your part will be good. Yeah, we're part of the good. A wonderful opportunity for the community to come together. I'm really, really pleased to be here. Uh, my name is Kristen Wong Tam, your city councillor representing Toronto Centre Rosedale. I think, first of all, we need to acknowledge the city staff who worked really hard to make sure that this happens for us. So we've got our official city photographer and um, our staff from the protocol office who just put out all the logistics to help us through this. Um, so I want to just uh, let you know that there's a number of things that, uh, that makes me really proud as a city councillor. Um, one of them is the community collaboration that we have with the 14 resident uh, neighborhood associations that we have in Ward 27. Uh, without the participation and the constant partnership and collaboration, these type of events don't take place. But they're not just the events themselves, it's actually the actions and the process of building relationships that make our neighborhoods that much stronger, more beautiful, more vibrant, and safer. Um, the Garden District Residents Association uh, needs to be singled out and acknowledged. They have been incredible pioneers and stewards for this neighborhood. They have done a lot of work. Much of it is thankless, as we know, whether it's organizing, uh, bringing people together in gymnasiums, in schools, uh, resolving sometimes neighborhood conflicts, making sure that we can all live in, a, in an area of harmony and peace. And that is not simple work. And we live in one of the most diverse neighborhoods in the city. Um, and there's a lot of activity going on. And so I want to just commend our leadership at the Residents Association to help us shepherd this forward. Um, beside, behind me is the, uh, the new sign that will mark this beautiful linear laneway. And I say beautiful because I want to envision what it could look like into the future. We've started a nameway lane, naming program in War 27, and so far we've approved about eight new laneway names uh, since 2011. And as we go through this exercise of trying to identify what these places should be called, it also gives people a sense of purpose and place. So now they can point to the laneway and say, oh yes, that's Richard Bigley Lane. And who was Richard Bigley? Well, he was a businessman uh, in the old town of York, and he actually, um, the loft building that you see behind me dates back to 1876. So that you, we can honestly say one of the pioneers of our city. And uh, he actually created a, an empire, uh, and this empire had a fantastic little name. It was called Happy Thoughts, Happy Thoughts Empire. Happy Thoughts selling stoves and furnaces. So um, when we walk through this laneway, not only is it Richard Begley laneway, perhaps we can also have some happy thoughts. Um, it was the headquarter for his business, and this history is very important for us to acknowledge because knowing where we came from also gives us a sense of where we want to go. Um, there's still a remnant of a ghost sign that's on the property, and you can still see that. And that, of course, is one of the oldest signs in the city of Toronto in terms of commercial signs. Um, I know that the community has worked tirelessly to illuminate the history of our area, to illuminate the wonderful attributes that we have as a community, and, uh, and that effort is not lost on myself, and certainly not lost uh, in the neighboring relationships that we have with the agencies and institutions that line Mutual, as well as Jarvis, Queen, and Gerard, and all throughout. Um, we have been undertaking a very comprehensive and a broad-based um, uh, strategy of revitalizing the downtown east. 
we've done a lot of work. We have been working with the Residents Association, with TCHC tenants, with residents in our shelters, as well as prominent property owners and business owners and beyond. We have really put together a broad collaborative table, and we've been asking people the question of, what would it take for us to build a vibrant, livable, sustainable, prosperous community, inclusive community for everyone? And for over the past year and a half, we've been working together through working groups and answering that question. And, uh, there will be some big developments coming into the neighborhood. Seton House will be redeveloped. There is a report going to City Council uh, very shortly in July that talks about the future of Seton House. So you can pay attention to that because it is coming. Um, the playground for the Al for Allen Gardens will be unveiled in 2014. My fingers are crossed. We've literally doubled the scope of the uh, area and we've expanded the work. So. If we build the infrastructure, we hope that these will be some of those features that will actually help us create those livable neighborhoods. Um, and there's many, mother, many other things. But today, this is the one step that takes us to those multiple places that will get us to where we want to go. I want to um, introduce the president of the uh, Garden District Residents Association. And uh, you know him very well. He wanders the street all the time. I see him in the in places where I'm like, hey, there's Nick again. Um, and I want to invite him to say a few words. And, uh, and Nick. Well, hi. Yes, my name is Nick Culverwell, and uh, I have the privilege uh, this year of being the president of the Garden District Residents Association. Um, and uh, to the councillor and uh, to her staff in particular, and by the way, uh, I know that there are a lot of city staff present today, but I don't see actually any members of your your inner circle, your your staff that David are... Oh, right there's here. David's right there. Right there yeah. I just want to give a shout out to that group in particular because uh, as a residents association, we get a lot of stuff that comes into us. Unfortunately, a lot of it's complaints and, and, <laughs> and other challenges. But uh, we often act as a conduit between other people in the in the neighborhood and the councillor's office. And I just have to say that uh, the councillor's team is absolutely wonderful. Um, considering the amount of stuff they must get on a daily basis, um, we always get something back, you know, almost immediately to at least acknowledge that something's happening. And more often than not, something does, uh, and something very positive. So my thanks very much to the councillor and her team. Um, I have to single out Maria. Though Maria, I suppose Jan is, is, is a big part of this too. Very uh, <laughs> But um, uh, it, it is, after all, just a laneway. Um, and, you know, we could easily say, well, why on earth are we putting uh, a name on it? Why are we actually, uh, you know, the, the, there won't actually be an address on Richard's Bigley Lane, as far as we know. Uh, there won't need to be postal service here, so why are we calling it anything? Well, the answer is that somehow we feel uh, that by naming it, we prove that somebody cares about it. And that's really what our kind of inch-by-inch inch strategy is in this, in this neighborhood. Um, there are a lot of huge challenges that this neighborhood faces that no one individual can do really anything about. But there's a lot that the individuals here can do to just move the ball forward an inch or two um, and as we continue to do that, we just keep building momentum, and I'm a big believer in this. I think if we can get 100 or 200 of those little steps, uh, we'll have a huge improvement uh, in this neighborhood. So the fact that somebody picked up a bunch of garbage bags, sorted this alleyway out, and the fact that, strangely enough, once it became clear that somebody actually cared about this little stretch of, uh, of concrete here, people stopped abusing it. That the, 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 the traffic in terms of, uh, you know, the drug paraphernalia and maybe people hanging out back here who shouldn't be here kind of disappeared because suddenly it said somebody actually cares about this place and, uh, and somehow, even on some of our, our roughest neighbors, uh, that resonates somewhere and it says, yeah, we should, we should be respectful of this place too. Um, the councillor stole uh, all the, the, the history stuff that I was going to talk about as far as Richard Bigley is concerned, uh, because I had to look him up as, say, a, 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 a very important member of the, the business community in the 19th century in Toronto. Um, and, and I just love the fact that his main line of stoves, he was in the stove business, uh, his main line of stoves were called the Happy Thought Stove. Um, 
And so I, I know that it's always these metaphorical stretches, uh, but it actually speaks very clearly to what it is that we try to do on a day-to-day -day basis in this community. It's about optimism. It's about not letting uh, a, uh, uh, the, the numerous setbacks that we all have every day as far as living in this neighborhood is concerned. Uh, to live here, you need to be an optimist. You need to believe that, that things are just going to keep getting better and better and better. And uh, if that's a question of thinking happy thoughts and lighting your stove, then, then that, <laughs> that works for us. Uh, and I just want to conclude on that. It, it's, this is something that I think a lot of people don't understand about the downtown east. Um, the people that live here choose to live here. Um, we're not here because we couldn't afford a house in Rosedale or, you know, we, we desperately aspire to live at, uh, at Bathurst and Eglinton but just can't make it happen, so we end up here in the downtown east. That's not the case at all. We live here because we love it here. We love the diversity of this, of this neighborhood. We love its downtown character, the site that it is a little bit, you know, sort of rough around the edges. That, that all sort of makes it a great place for us to live. So we're here, uh, and we're hoping to make a difference. And again, it's a game of inches, but uh, uh, my thanks again to the city for agreeing uh, to bend the rules a little bit, as, I, as it turns out, <laughs> to name this Richard Bigley Lane, but we really, really do appreciate it. So thank you very, very much. the sign what I'd like to do is ask Marie to join us if that's okay because a year and a half ago Marie and Jan came into our office and uh, and she said counselor we just moved into the neighborhood we bought this building and we started to clean up the laneway and uh, and she told us that she picked up syringes uh, drug paraphernalia garbage loose articles of clothing just refuge and, uh, and she started to take steward of this laneway and started to take care of this laneway. And the fact that the laneway looks as clean, as well maintained as it is right now, I can't say it was the city's, you know, I mean, the city doesn't deserve credit for this. I think we're helping maintain it, but she and her husband was the catalyst for that. So let us, uh, let us start, let us unveil the sign. Yeah. Where do you want us to stand? Who's in the show? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's a thing. Okay. 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 Can I get you to turn here as well? Just wait till that guy's gone. Okay, so I'm gonna do one, two, three, count, and now three, they're gonna pull.